Okay, good morning everyone. So this is um, CV167 pre-stressed concrete design module 1 introduction. Um, welcome to the first module of this course. So for this first lesson, we will be discussing what is a pre-stressed pre concrete and how it works. So what are the basic principles? How you how do they make a pre-stressed concrete? By the end of this module, you should be able to define what is pre-stressed concrete and identify methods of pre-stressing and also to identify what are the types of tendons used in pre-stressing. So the idea of pre-stressed concrete has been around since the latter de decades of the 19th century. But it, uh, but its use was limited by the quality of materials at that at that moment. So it took until 1920s and 1930s for its materials development to progress to a level where pre-stressed concrete could be used with confidence. So of course, so since pre-stressed concrete is used for um, erecting structures, so that part, uh, during that times. They had to be confident enough na the since this is a, a new material for them, so it, it they should be confident enough that it can carry or it has a structural integrity uh, upon using a pre-stressed concrete. So the principle behind pre-stressed concrete is that compressive stresses is induced by high strength steel tendons in a concrete member before loads are applied that is to reduce potential tensile stresses in concrete due to um, imposed loads so contrary to a ordinary reinforced concrete pre-stressed concrete is casted or made with a um, special or um, unique um, uh, process so you use uh, steel tendons and you pull uh, the tendon uh, to a uh, desired tensile strength and then before you before you can pour the concrete and release those tendons then um, um, it will uh, induce a compressive strength so okay so the principle behind ordinary enforced concrete is say we have a pile of books here or say this is the concrete represented by the books and to be reinforced by a bar or a stick so um, when you release the scaffold so after removing the scaffold this will be the reaction uh, it will create a due to the loading and the weight of the concrete there is a deflection on the uh, member or yung beam natin so, yung present na stresses on the uh, section or yung beam natin is, there is a compressive stress sa top bottom and tensile stress sa bottom fiber. So, on the uh, top fiber, merong compression. So, um, concrete is only good for compression but um, weak on ten uh, tensile stresses. That is why there are um, cracking nangyayari sa bottom section ng beam. So, yun yung nagiging effect, uh, yun yung nangyayari sa ordinary reinforced concrete. So, in a pre-stressed concrete, say you have a pile of books here, a row of books, so by squeezing them together at both ends tightly, you can lift the book without creating any um, deflection. So, um, by inducing compressive stresses on both ends of the member of the concrete, you are eliminating the, um, or reducing the possible tensile stresses. So, the um, stress diagram for this uh, member is um, compression only yung present sa uh, pre-stressed concrete. So, the, uh, the main objective is to eliminate tensile stresses, so meaning zero yung tensile stress mo, 
So that that also eliminates the cracking sa uh, bottom section ng uh, pre-stressed concrete. So yan yung um, advantage or yung principle behind pre-stressed concrete. So with that said, there are um, advantages for reinforced concrete. First is smaller section sizes. So since pre-stressed concrete member uses the whole concrete section, the second moment of area is bigger and so the section is stiffer. So, um, pwede mo siyang ma-reduce yung, uh, uh, yung uh, say yung area ng beam uh, due to the uh, compressive stress, in, uh, compressive force na induced dun sa uh, ano natin, sa uh, section. So, uh, for example, uh, you have a sa ordinary concrete the uh, the only uh, um, area used for uh, computation is yung yung uh, uh, fiber on compression so this is a uh, on compression so ito yung ginagamit na uh, sa computation but on uh, pre-stressed concrete uh, since uh, all sections are in compression, so lahat siya magagamit. So you can potentially reduce the section sizes to meet your uh, design requirement. And also, it will create smaller or no deflection at all. So depende sa uh, design. So the larger uh, second moment of area greatly re reduces the deflection for the given section. And also increased span. So the smaller section size reduces reduces self-weight, hence a given section can span further with pre-stressed concrete. And also, durability. So, ito yung um, one of the important uh, advantages. So, since the entire section remains in compression, no cracking of the concrete, as I was saying kanina, walang cracking sa bottom, that can occur and hence, there is little penetration of the cover. So, yan yung advantages na uh, pre-stressed concrete. Okay, so what are the methods of pre-stressing? First method is pre-tensioning. So, um, pre-tensioning is a method of pre-stressing in which tendons are tensioned before concrete is placed. So, say you have here a mold or a scaffold where the tendon is laid horizontally and then it is being Stretch. So by uh, by stretching the uh, tendons at at the desired tensile strength, then you will pour you will pour the concrete. Then after pouring the concrete and the concrete has set, so to make us the concrete natin, so you will cut the tendons at its anchorage. So by cutting the tendons, the tendon will try to um, return to its original uh, length or state. So with that uh, with that uh, reaction, so magkakaroon ng parang ano parang uh, compressive na forces at the end of the um, concrete and also since uh, the tendon is uh, attached directly to the concrete, so yung forces is dun mismo sa entire length ng tendon natin. So, na ini-induce niya dun sa concrete. So, uh, kumbaga, meron ng pre-induced uh, na concrete creating an uh, deflection upward. So, para pag nag-add ka ng load, so mariresist niya yung load. And then, uh, uh, less na lang yung uh, deflection ng concrete. So, yan yung uh, pre-tensioning. Second method, method is called post-tensioning. So, yung kayo na pre ngayon, post naman. So, uh, it is a method of pre-stressing in which tendons are tensioned after the concrete has hardened. So, um, previous yung pre-tensioning is you tension the tendon before pouring the concrete. So after the concrete has hardened, you release the tendons. That is, na-induce na yung force. 
So um, this time post tensioning is you the, um, you have a, um, a scaffold here you mold with a uh, duct or a hollow pipe inside the form. So you pour the concrete and then after the concrete has hardened on the duct you will insert a uh, tendon. So after inserting the tendon then the tendon will, will be pulled uh, uh, outward para ma tension siya. So when pulling the tendon to to uh, to hold the uh, tension tendon, maglagay ng anchorage dun sa end ng um, ducts. So after that, i-release yung uh, tendon from being tension. Then uh, so, para sa pretension, the tendon will tend to go back to its original strength, original uh, length, then creating a uh, force uh, transfer to the end of the concrete. So, mag-create na naman siya ng parang ano na. Um, it will uh, curve the concrete upward. So, internal stresses. So, para pag nag-load ka na, nag, uh, you put a load to the uh, uh, member is uh, may magre-resist na dun sa loading. So, uh, less na yung um, uh, deflection at yung uh, tensile stresses. So, there are two types of tendons. First is the bonded tendon. So, it is a tendon that is bonded throughout their length to the surrounding concrete just like yung sa um, pre-tension uh, pre-tensioning. So, non-anchored tendons or yung pre-tension the mga uh, member is uh, bonded yung uh, tendon niya. Meaning, uh, all throughout the length of the um, tendon is uh, naka-attach na siya or it is surrounded by concrete. So, for end anchored tendons, just like dun sa um, post-tensioning, it can be either bonded or unbonded. So, bonded, uh, unbonded, kasi uh, yung duct, yung duct is pananatilihing hollow yung duct na yun. So, yung pipe na, in-insert yung tendons. So, um, the tendons is directly um, uh, um, inducing the force dun sa duct, then dun sa concrete. So, but sa, uh, there are anchor tendons na you can bond the um, tendons by injecting a grout dun sa duct. So, by injecting a uh, concrete grout uh, dun sa duct, so, mababond na yung tendon and yung duct. So, parang uh, ma, uh, ma, so, surround na sila ng concrete. So, uh, other type of tendons is unbonded tendons. So, it is a tendon in which the pre-stressing steel is prevented from bonding to so unbonded to the concrete and it is free to move relative to the concrete. So, that are the types of the tendons. Okay, so um, that's, it. that's it for the introduction. So, assignment or self-assessment question. So, as you can see kanina, yung um, post-tension is uh, yung ducts na ginamit dun is naka curve na siya. So, my task for is explain the effect of curved ducts to the post-tension pre-stressed concrete member compared kung naging straight lang yung duct na. So, what are the difference kung straight straight yung duct before uh, post-tensioning or yung naka-curve yung duct. So, um, I'll post an uh, assignment dun sa Google Classroom. So, abangan nyo na lang yung post natin. So, uh, references. So, these are the references. And that ends our module 1. So, thank you for listening and have a good day.